Okay, so we're going to talk about how to find the heat of reaction when you are given a chemical equation. And we're going to use this as our example. We've got hydrogen gas and oxygen gas coming together to form water. So the steps you want to take when you're trying to find the heat of reaction is first, ask yourself what bonds need to be broken. So in order to form products, you first are going to have to break the bonds of your reactants. So I'm going to look over here on the left hand side of the arrow and say, what are my reactants and how much energy does it take to break those bonds? It will help to draw the structural formula of these molecules so you can figure out what bonds you're actually breaking. So when I see 2H2, that means I have two H2 molecules. They're single bonded to each other. And I'm going to look on page 38 and you will be given a table of values of bond energies. And you'll see that each HH bond has an energy of 436 kilojoules. So in order to break these two bonds right here, I'm going to need 2 times 436 kilojoules of energy to break those bonds. My oxygen molecule, the two oxygen atoms in this case are held together by a double bond. And in order to break this double bond, again, if I look on page 38, I'll find that this double bond takes 498 kilojoules of energy to break. So in order to break all of the bonds in my reactants, I'm going to add up all of these energies. And when I do, I'll find that the total energy is 1370. So 1,370 kilojoules of energy to break the bonds in my initial reactants. So breaking bonds requires an input of energy. Then I'm going to go along and I'm going to form some new bonds in my product. So I want to figure out, well, how much energy is released when I form these new bonds. So breaking bonds requires energy. Making new bonds will release energy. So I'm going to draw out the structural formulas of my product. So I've got two water molecules. And water looks like this. I've got two H's attached to an O. So if I look at this, you can see I've got four lines here representing four bonds that need to be broken. So I've got four OH bonds. Um, and these are actually being formed, not broken. So if you look at your table of values on page 38, it will tell you, tell you it takes 460 kilojoules of energy, energy to break an OH bond. So if I'm actually making these OH bonds, that means that each OH bond I form will release 460 kilojoules of energy. So if I add up the energies of all four of these bonds, I'll find that it's 1,000 840 kilojoules of energy, and that's how much energy is going to be released when I form these bonds over here in my products. So right now I'm using up 1,370 kilojoules, and I'm releasing 1,840 kilojoules. Notice how I'm releasing more energy than I'm using up. So it looks like overall this reaction is going to be exothermic. And if you were to draw an energy diagram, it would look like this. So here's the energy of my reactants, the hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, it's going to go up by 1370. This is my energy to break those initial bonds. This is otherwise known as my activation energy. That will put me in my transition state where I've broken bonds. I haven't formed all my new ones yet. And when I form those new bonds, that's going to release 1,840 kilojoules of energy. Notice how my products end up being lower in energy than I started with. And the difference here is going to be um, 1370 minus 1840. It's a difference of 470 kilojoules. So that means that my heat of reaction in this case is negative 470. So I have a negative heat of reaction. I lost more energy than I used up. So this is going to be an exothermic reaction. And that's how you find the heat of reaction using your bond energies.